Okay, so I just want to make this quick video. I hope Zach or Asman does see this video. I just want to start off by saying that I don't want this video to be a forum for toxicity or hate. Zach has always been really supportive of my videos and always been kind to me, so I hope we can reciprocate that. And I want everyone to know that it's completely fine that me or anyone else, if two people don't see eye to eye on something or they have a different viewpoint on something, that's completely okay. But I just wanted to share my two cents because I have spent a lot of time thinking about solo queue, although I do believe right now isn't the best time for <laughs> to be pushing for solo queue in World of Warcraft. But I did just want to clarify a couple of things. So on All Craft today, and I... I'm happy that all craft is back on. I love listening to my free time. Uh, Asmund brought up this example while they were talking with Bellular about solo queue being a, uh, you know, a cure to the symptom, not the disease. The disease being players not wanting to interact anymore and not making relationships like they used to in the past. And this example is brought up actually a lot uh, on all craft. I think it was on the last one with Annie. I heard it come up again. And Although I would really agree, you know, he actually brings up, uh, you know, the idea that PvP players should have their own shared space in World of Warcraft like they used to back in the day where they could duel and maybe there's vendors there where everyone comes together to kind of make those relationships. In the Burning Crusade, I actually met my first arena partner dueling, right? That's how you would gauge if somebody was good at the game. I used to hang out in, in Duratar and TBC on my Shadow Priest and I loved to duel people because I couldn't do arena. I didn't have anyone to queue with and I met this rogue. And this rogue and I dueled. I found out he was pretty good via dueling. And I said, hey, do you want to make a team? And we got our first 2K. We got our shoulders that week. It was super cool. We ended up being really great friends. One of the things that I found out playing PvP for so long is that the game has actually changed quite a bit. And, you know, at that time, we, did, we, we used to duel players because we didn't know... Uh, we didn't have anything to gauge if someone was good at arena arena was still brand new We didn't have any achievements really there wasn't any of these systems and websites that you could do to track somebody's history Like you have today and you use dueling as a way to gauge players The unfortunate part is that we don't really use dueling as a way to gauge if somebody's good at arena anymore It's what we used to use back in the day because it's all we have but now with all these ch achievements you know, being good at a duel just means you're good at dueling. You know, it, that's like similar to saying, you know, I'm good at speed leveling or questing, invite me to your mythic plus group. That it's not really saying much. And I would definitely agree that there is a disease that affects a lot of players today in World of Warcraft. But it's a disease that's kind of, it affects you in real life as well, right? The, the real issue with why people don't want to queue, it's not that they don't want to interact with other players. I think a lot of people would love to find a group of friends to queue with actively all the time. That's the dream. That's what everyone's looking for. It's more so that people are really picky and whether they want to admit it or not, they have this gigantic ego and you see it in real life too. The disease is that people are reluctant to give people the chance to play, not that they don't want to interact with other people because you can find a game it's just that, oh, this guy's not exactly at my experience, or he's 100 CR lower than me, or does, does this class actually work work well? And I recently watched a uh, GDC episode. I'm sure many of you have seen it. It's with Mark Rosewater. And I'll play a quick clip for you guys that I think better explains where I'm coming from. So that brings us to lesson number one. Fighting against human nature is a losing battle. Um, so they say in game design, you should know your audience. So our audience is human. Um, and they come with a complex operating system. Um, but while it's quirky, it is something that can be understood. There's an entire field of psychology trying to understand it. But as game designers, we have to be forewarned, humans can be a bit stubborn. So what I like to say to people is, don't change your players to match your game. Change your game to match your players. Don't get yourself into a fight that you're probably not going to win. And there are things throughout time, the cell phone, there's things that get invented that change human behavior. But don't assume your game is going to be one of those things. And that when you try to make humans change for your game, your game is going to suffer. Change your game to match your audience, which are human. So the reason why I like to refer to this clip is that I do wish players viewed the game differently and they were more understanding and they were more willing to work things out with teammates and are understanding if you have to lose a couple games to win a couple games to get that synergy going. Um, but the issue is, is I think that this is another example of Blizzard trying to change uh, players behavior for their game rather than changing the game for players behavior today the other day I was watching all craft again and Annie came on and the same topic was brought up 
And Annie was saying that she doesn't like the idea of solo queue because, you know, well, what about LFG? And I, I totally understand that. I do think that LFG would probably lose a lot of participation. However, personally, I believe that LFG from a game development standpoint kind of sucks because you're essentially not doing anything, right? You're, you're literally putting yourself into a system that does lock you out of everything in the game. Most of World of Warcraft today and a lot of MMOs today for probably various reasons is very instance based. And when you're in LFG, you can't do anything instance. You can't do a lot of the content in the game. And you're also pretty much signing away your ability to see any other groups within the LFG system, right? Like if you're a mage in LFG and you're looking for a rogue and a rogue is also in LFG and they both made groups, you don't know each other exists. You can't see what groups are being created around you. So a lot of people don't even like making groups. And in that case, if no one wants to make a group and you're only looking for groups and there's another person that might match well with you and they're also looking for groups, you don't know each other exists. So of course there could be ways to improve the LFG system. But in any case, I would say that not playing the game is not a really good way of playing the game, right? Waiting around isn't how I think you should play a game for $15 a month. I think the best way to meet people that you'd want to play with is by doing the activities that you enjoy. And I think most importantly, a lot of people miss the point on solo queue. I don't want solo queue to replace this, you know, the interaction element of the game. I want it to be an interaction element of the game. You know, I, I think that's the best way to find potential partners is by playing with them, not having to worry about should I accept this person? You're, that's why the matchmaking system is in place to match you with, with people around your experience range. And of course, you're going to get some bad matchups here and there, but you're also going to have a matchup where you get paired with a class that works well with you. What if you get paired up with a mage or a paladin, which is very likely, or a hunter, and your class works really well with that? And you're like, hey, I'm a warrior. I got paired up with this mage. We won a game, or I want to play with you again. Can I add you? I've always wanted to play you know, Fire Mage, Age Pal, Warrior, let me add you and let's do regular team threes. And one of the w one of the benefits of having a solo queue system in an MMO is that you get to offer rewards and incentives to incentivize players to do regular team queue versus solo queue. And rewards and MMOs obviously hold a lot more ground when compared to games like League of Legends. And the last thing that I quickly wanted to touch on is that a lot of players often say, well, it's an MMO and solo queue is one step closer to it not being an MMO. The reality is that arena is a really small subcategory of World of Warcraft and, and then within PvP as well. And then PvP is also a subcategory of World of Warcraft. And there are, you know, it kind of sucks because there's a lot of elements today in World of Warcraft that are much more detrimental to it no longer being an MMO. You know, you have... Um, the WoW token, I just made a video talking about gold and the WoW token, which really makes it so that you can just buy all of these achievements, you can buy all of the gear that you want using real money that's totally that's totally aligned with, with the TOS. You know, you have the auction house now selling enchants and professions. You know, back in the day, I used to interact with players and in TBC still today. Uh, in Classic, you interact with people so they can enchant your gear. And I would add players that had certain enchants because I knew that was my enchanter hookup. You know what I mean? That was the guy that I'd go to for enchants. You have things like sharding. Um, although I'm sure it's due to technical limitations, sharding makes it so that you don't even see the same people on your realm if you're standing in the same area. War mode is another example. There's all of these things that have really been detrimental to World of Warcraft as an MMO. You have the all these mounts that you can buy and these skins that you can buy that kind of bring down some of the other other mounts that you might have achieved uh, through your hard work, which is a part of being in an MMO, how people view you in the game. One little game mode having a system in place where it allows you to meet players more easily by actually playing the game rather than sitting around all day with the hopes of you then taking on a 3v3 team and incentivizing that. Does that really no longer make it an MMO? Is that a fair you know, point to bring up. I'm not sure. But anyways, I've obviously thought a lot about solo queue over the past couple of years, and I just wanted to offer my two cents. You know, Zach, if you see this video, I hope it finds you well, and I appreciate all of you guys watching the video. See you all in the next one.